If you'd like to place a bet on Trump's disastrous trade war against China, then maybe you should look into doing something like this. Hi, this is Fabi with Equity Guru, and today I want to tell you a quick story about a very interesting company with a high chance of riding the coattails of this trade war. Why? Because what they do is they explore rare earths. Now, you probably haven't been around as long as some of the old folks here in the rare earths industry, but uh, if you were around in 2010, then you would remember that China all of a sudden stopped exporting rare earths, or at least highly limited it, which made the price of pretty much all of them skyrocket. If you think that the trade war has the potential to do anything like this, then rare earths must be on your speculation list. And this is a serious contender, so let's take a look. So let's take a quick look down this time machine. And this is an article in Business Insider from October 2010. Here's the truth about the rare earth stocks that are surging right now. And I find this just amazing because you scroll down here and bam, they mention we've told you about one company, Rare Element Resources, that saw its stock surge 1200% in the last year, needless to say, more than a 10 bagger for sure. They reinforce the idea that China has an outright monopoly in the industry that, believe it or not, in nine years hasn't changed as much as you would think, even though this has happened before. And it puts everything that's outside of China in a really fragile place because at a moment's notice, this could happen again. I'm not saying it will, but it could. As you go down this article, you can see that they mention many other rare earths companies at that time, anything from very early stage explorers to producers, etc. They all show that they have, you know, double, triple, gone up 30%, etc, etc. Now, there are always multiple ways to play this. Uh, we have here Defense Metals Corp, which I will get into in a moment. And Defense Metals Corp, you can see here, is a very small company with a rare earths element to it. Uh, the share structure, I believe, is not fully diluted at this time, but we're going to get to that very soon. It's still a very decent and tight share structure. Trading very thinly at the moment, and you can see that they've had... Uh, let's pan out here. They've oscillated between a high of 25 cents and a low of 12 cents. They're only uh, basically half a cent off it's all time low so very unloved nobody's really looking at defense metals corp at this moment but here's maybe why you should now like i mentioned there are roughly 40 million or 41 million fully diluted and outstanding shares uh, some of these warrants are for 30 cents so we're still below that some stock options at 15 cents, 20 cents, 25 and 20 cents were also below all of those. So no immediate dilution in the foreseeable future, although they have just recently raised and I believe that this is from February 1st. So yes, uh, they have raised about half a million bucks just recently. With management and directors, people who are experienced in mining, we see here names that we recognize, such as Advantage Lithium Corp. Kind of like that lithium is somewhat similar to this rare earth metal company, and I'll tell you why. Defense Metals basically focuses on high-tech metal, so anything that's used for the military, and also metals that are used in EV applications and green energy. Those are the metals that they're actually looking for and trying to develop. You'll also recognize Max Sally, who is a CEO of Berrien Mining, the gold company. Let's take a look at their property. So they do have 
a rare earths property in BC. They also hold a large area in the Athabasca Basin for uranium. Let's talk about the rare earths element. So huge piece of land, 1700 hectares in BC, decent mining jurisdiction. It says here strategically positioned alongside a major forestry service road connected to Highway 97. In BC, you really want something that is close to infrastructure. It is a very rich piece of land, let's just put it like that. But sometimes the costs for development are prohibitive because some things are way too far away from civilization. Trained nearby workforce, that's a huge plus. But that really comes down the line once the project is ready to be developed. So the light rare earth elements that Defense Metals is focusing on are neodymium, praseodymium, cerium, samarium, and lanthanum. Now, if you're wondering if I had to Google any of these pronunciations, you are correct. What do we use some of these things for? Well, ND is used in electric cars. You have PR being used in maglev trains. So those super high-tech trains in, say, Japan. And I think in China, they're making them as well. Good old Element 59. Also in nuclear reactors, we see an uptick in nuclear reactors being built around the world. Spacecraft is also an area where they used SM element number 62. Now all of these elements are used in the military, which means if China doesn't want to play ball and they can't get it from anywhere else, then really anybody who's even remotely in the industry gets a lot of speculation money thrown at it. These are some of the commercial applications as mentioned. In medical, you have uh, MRI machines, PET imaging and x-rays, uh, batteries for cell phones, laptops and automobiles, commercial airspace in alloys with niobium and jet engines. You also have uh, electric motors and camera lenses. Now, is a trade war the only way that these metals are going to be worth more in the future or that any of these projects could be viable or profitable? Absolutely not. You see here that there is a demand increase, sometimes by double digits, for certain uses within the metals that these guys are looking for and actually finding. So here we have Wichita, and I'm sure I am butchering this pronunciation, but this is a project that has very elevated levels of niobium. I actually know a tiny little bit about niobium from studying that for a different project. And it turns out that tech went in and, you know, was doing some work and just pretty much abandoned it. But this was back in the late 80s. Now, I would have imagined that back in the late 80s, they probably weren't even looking for rare earths as such because we just didn't have as many uses for them as we do today. So it's understandable that if they were looking for something a little bit different, such as zinc only, then if they don't find enough zinc, then it's not the right project for them. They drop it, move on. And tech won't really do anything that's small. You know, they're a, a huge company. They are only interested in very large projects, very rich, and it has to be the right metal for that current cycle. Now, the work that has been done here has actually outlined uh, some niobium, barium, strontium, zinc, and fluorine. It's a fairly large area, and that to me is very promising. I absolutely love people finding niobium, especially because at this present moment, about 93 to 95% of niobium produced in the world is fully controlled by Brazil. And the current president, surprise, surprise, wants to really invest in making niobium more and more used for several different applications so that Brazil would just make more money from that. So it's not out of the cards that, believe it or not, that this could actually also be restricted as an export. So keep your eyes out for niobium. Now here's a preliminary work that has been done in their current project. 
they have found a great deal of cerium at 2.34%, lanthanum at 1.77%, neodymium at 0.52%, and praseodymium at 0.18%. What is the current price for these beauties? Well, you can see here that cerium and lanthanum go for very little money at just under two bucks per kilogram. However, the going price for neodymium and praseodymium is very high at 62 and 61 dollars per kilogram. I mean, if you look at, say, copper, you can probably make a decent amount of money if you have enough of it at 0.52 percent but copper only goes for what 250 to 75 per pound so having something that is sold for 62 dollars per kilogram that would make it about 30 bucks per pound that's not bad at all especially because all of these are being found in unison let's call it like that so you're not just finding one but you're finding in one piece of land many different elements and you can extract them all when it's feasible to do so and capitalize on all of them metallurgy testing has been done already and here are some of the results 80% recovery of cerium, lanthanum, and neodymium. 44 rare earth oxide, REO concentrate grade. And 9.5 times upgrading ratio from head grade. 8.4% concentrate mass yield. Uh, this has been considered excellent. So the rare earth that they have been finding is actually hosted in rock that is quite decent to process. That's how you would explain this in a very simplified way. The most exciting thing, however, is what they're up to right now. Defense Metals provides Wichita Rare Earth Element Drill Update. So to date, eight of planned 13 core drill holes have been completed. They are taking about two and a half days per hole. And this here is very important. All holes drilled to date have intersected significant widths of dolomite carbonate containing visible REE mineralization. So basically they are getting every hole with even visible signs of rare earths. Obviously this is ongoing and the end result will be published possibly very soon within a few weeks, but this is very good news for them drilling right now. For a tiny, tiny little market cap of $3.7 million, some money in the till, an ongoing drill campaign, also an asset in the Athabasca Basin that nobody's even thinking about, close to all-time lows. Some people play the rare earth companies as a lottery ticket because if something happens, then you already own it, you're there. I see that this possibly can go much further than that. I don't think that this is just a rare earth element story. I believe that what they have been finding could be very economic by what we have seen in the going market prices for the elements that they're finding. So this could actually have legs on its own without a trade war and the trade war could be, you know, the thing that just brings it to light that starts the conversation around rare earths and more and more investor and speculator interest. So that's Defense Metals, DEFN on the TSXV, DFMTF on the OTCQB, and 35D on the FSE.